I'm Heidi Hewitt, AutoCAD Technical Marketing Manager at Autodesk, and I'm here with Guillermo Melantoni, Senior Product Manager for User Interaction and Interoperability at Autodesk. Guillermo, can you describe the difference or um, why a user would use NURBS surfaces versus explicit surfaces or, um, yeah, explicit surfaces in AutoCAD? Sure. Yeah, I would actually try not to use that much NURBS surfaces at the beginning, right? So when would I use a NURBS surface? Uh, as, as I mentioned before, the explicit surface is a surface that remembers the method of creation. That means that you have a lot of power to customize, change, tweak, and the whole surface will react to those changes and the properties belonging to the method of creation. For example, a revolution will have the angle of revolution, an extrusion will have the height of the temper angle, and so on. Uh, but, but sometimes, let's say you made an extrusion, right? And in the middle of that surface, you want some kind of bump, right? Just a little thing coming out from that. A, an extrusion will never define that, right? So you have a couple of alternatives. You can just go, go back and try to create a loft with a lot of cross sections and, and, and get exactly that. Uh, but that, that is really not, not a great way to do it. So at that time, my suggestion is to convert to NURBS, which is an option in the ribbon. And once you convert to NURBS, you can show the control vertices. The same control vertices we have for the splines, we now have it in a grid right, that goes along the U's and the V's, which are the two directions on the NURBS surface. Uh, so that, that we call that the hull. Right? So once you display the hull by rebuilding, just like, again, just like in splines and with the same commands, you don't have to learn two commands for the same thing, uh, you can add more controversies or remove controversies for both directions and also change the degree. Once you have exactly what you want, for example, you need a lot of density on the, on, on, on the surface because you want some very detailed uh, tweaking, right? you can just grab those grips and move them with the gizmo. You can also add controversies on both, both directions. For example, you want extra flex, uh, detail on one part. So the rebuilding will make a, a uniform distribution of use and Vs. In this case, you, apart from that, you want just more detail on a tiny part. You don't have to add more detail everywhere and just use that part. You can do it just locally. And the ultimate flexibility is what we, what we call the CV edit bar, which will let you track any point, even regardless of the position of the controversy, and by grabbing that point, you can just tweak around, uh, change the tangents, do whatever you want to that surface. Just make sure it's, it's buildable <laughs> and at the end, right? Of course. Uh, but so basically, that's why I would use a nerve surface instead of an explicit surface. So kind of summarizing, explicit surfaces are great when the shape still responds to the method of creation. And nerve surfaces are amazingly good and flexible when you have singularities within the shapes. Okay, that's great. Great way to kind of distinguish between those and help us choose. And you don't have a sensitivity with nerve surfaces. Because since they don't respond to the method of creation, there's nothing that AutoCAD can grab to say, okay, I need to change it this way. So that's the other thing to, the other caveat, the other thing to, change, to keep in mind. Nerve surfaces, very powerful, very flexible, very not associative. So. If you can, if you have the information to make it explicit, do that to start with. Remember that when you convert it to NURBS, sure. you lose that exactly. associativity. Yes. Great, great advice. Thanks, Guillermo.